Hello, this is Dorothea Bassett from Live and Learn. And today I am intending to teach you a little bit about a healthy immune system. It is so very important at this time and the year and in general that our immune system should be really, really healthy and well. And so that we can defend ourselves from all kinds of bugs. And so therefore, let me start with my first slide. Now in this slide and in this whole presentation, you will learn about the importance of the healthy immune system and what part of the immunity it plays in your overall health. And of course, which organs are actually part of this immune system and what functions do those cells play in the immune system process. So have a look at the little chart on the right side. The first line of defense is right here in your nose, in your tonsils and the adenoids and the thymus gland. The thymus is a very important uh, organ that in babies is quite big and the older we get, it sadly shrinks. Now also the lymph nodes, they are everywhere in the body. Mainly you can feel them under your arms or in your groin. Very important. Look at the spleen, it's on the left side of your body, and your uh, liver's on the right side of your body, your gut, of course, and these little bits that are called the pious patches. Um, you will find they are also near the gut, and I'll talk you through those. Um, let's go forward. <laughs> okay, again, here you have the picture of where all these uh, parts of the immune system can be found. The lymphatic system is amazing. So all those biological structures that are, uh, that are processes then and the body protects against, it kills the pathogens and it detects a wide variety of agents from viruses to parasitic worms. And it distinguishes the body's own healthy cells and tissues in order to function properly. And the immune system has a very complicated detection system to find pathogens and to evolve quite rapidly, allowing these pathogens um, or not allowing these pathogens to infect the body. Have a look. Here you have them all in one picture. Um, first, the thymus glands. The thymus gland is located in the upper chest region. So when you tap on your sternum, you're actually activating your thymus gland. It's really quite funny. I learned this many years ago. The thymus gland loves three-quarter rhythm. So if you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three you are energizing and stimulating your thymus gland for your immune system. So it produces the lymphocytes and the, they are very important and they uh, run through the whole body in their own system. Now the spleen is on the left side of your body and it holds a reservoir of blood and platelets and it destroys the old red blood, blood cells and it functions as a lymph gland filter in the blood. Then the bone marrow, now that is very important. In our bone marrow, we constantly make new cells. We make new blood cells, but we also make stem cells and B cells and granulites and natural killer cells. So having a good bone marrow is of utmost importance. And of course, I taught you in an extra talk all about the gut and the immune uh, abilities that are sitting in the gut. So if you want to have a healthy immune system, fix the gut. It houses over 700 species of bacteria and it produces all the antibodies and it produces the enzymes that help you dis detoxify and it takes out all the nasties and helps you to clean out your system. So uh, it's also home to the friendly bacteria and last time at my last talk I told you it's a huge amount in your body that is not you. That is actually the microbiome. 
Now, the lymph nodes themselves, they are found everywhere in the body, inside, on the inside, on the soft part of the body. And um, they are working slowly, slowly, and they can be very much supported by lymphatic drainage massage. In fact, it's one of the best ways to overcome an ear infection is to do a lymphatic drainage for the neck and for the shoulders and the upper region. Here you have the whole picture of the immune system. Have a look, it's quite fascinating. So if you look on the left side, the virus attacks the cell and the macrophage is a little feeder, it eats it up. I uh, remember Pac-Man games, those macrophages, they engulf the virus and they make antigens. And then all these helper cells come now along the B cells and the T cells and they make special antibodies. And these special antibodies then bind to the virus and also they attach the, uh, to the virus and the infected body cell and signal for that in destruction. It's quite a teamwork amongst all organs. And in this immune system, it's simply fascinating. And here we have the whole immune system again in one big picture, the ultimate line of defense. Have a look at the external part of the immune system. This is why we need to be well hydrated. This is why we should perhaps inhale good essential oils or simply salt water to keep our mucous membranes really healthy so that they can fulfill their immune function. And that's why we wash our hands, of course. And have good oxygen in our body. That's the external Defense. Now, the internal is that immunological cell system. On the left side, you have those phagocytes. They are the Pac-Mans. They are attacking those nasties. And then they attack and mutate the cancer cells. They are literally, you know, apprehend those cells. And they continue to give them to the T cells and the B cells, who are then basically eliminating those nasties and eating them up literally. That's how pus is created. So producing antibodies in the, in the bone marrow, look, it stores the memory of it. That means you have immunity. You get immune from certain sicknesses once you've had them, which is great news. That's why I love this idea of the herd immunity. If we all and many, many thousands of people now know that they have silently had an infection because Corona is part of our um, flu viruses and many, many people actually are immune against it already. And that's good news, isn't it? Let's have a look at the whole, uh, the seven ways how you might be harming your immune system. And many of you can instantly, you know, it jumps out to them. They know for themselves what they are doing or not doing. Um, that is detrimental to your health and to your immunity. Sadly, we are constantly being bombarded with angst producing news. And sometimes it's the best really to switch off the news and to certainly not listen to the news while you're having your dinner or your lunch. But focus on the good food, not on the news that you are eating at the same time. And watch how much of the good alcohol you are drinking while you are in lockdown. Now that we slowly come back to normal life, maybe that we can also reduce. A lack of sleep is a big issue. And I have uh, sent you a few of those little meditations. Hopefully that's a little help. And that's a big thing you got to address if you have sleeping disorders, you seriously have to address it in a serious way. And think about the diet. And of course, I'll be talking to you about the diet in a minute uh, more on detail. 
make sure you're well hydrated make sure you have lots of good water with minerals in there so that you can flush all the, the toxins out of your body you support your lymph system you are supporting your digestive system you are supporting your liver and all those internal organs get exercise have at least a half an hour of good walk every day if you have a dog you're lucky and of course stop smoking and because all of these things create three main main issues and it comes always always back to these three key reasons oxidation means you are rusting you're rusting too much you're rusting too fast your cells are overexposed to oxidation inflammation thus because you are hot and dehydrated things are starting to get inflamed inflamed in your tissues inflamed in your joints even inflamed in your mind and acidosis means that you are eating and drinking too many things that make you sour so these are the three key factors why we are not well and why our immune system is suffering and so it makes perfect sense to say we have to have the alkalizing foods that gives us ability to bring our ph back into balance we have to have the hydrating foods and the antioxidizing foods i don't think i've just spelt it right but don't worry <laughs> so antioxidants hydration and alkalization that is the main thing so have a look at the great immune this boosting system foods here and you may instantly see a few that you do like and that you can purchase quickly and they are in season luckily at the moment all the citrus fruit are in season and we can buy the most wonderful broccoli and red peppers and we i just bought a huge watermelon and it's such a great hydrating uh, fruit you can put it in the blender make a juice with it add um, the kiwis to it make a really nice fruit juice in your blender that's the best thing you can have and look at also the cinnamon the carrots the cloves the green tea who amongst you is drinking green tea brew it quickly don't let it go bitter it has so many benefits here's another thing that i wanted to sort of home to you the antioxidants the anti-inflammatory agents and the alkalizing foods here you have them again but be aware we need the vitamins we need absolutely we need the water soluble vitamins such as vitamin c we need the fat soluble vitamins and that's extremely important at the moment we need to have vitamin a e and d absolutely and they can be stored they are fat soluble they can be stored in your body so with the things that you eat you can have a good amount of it but at the moment i would even suggest that you um, supplement with that and also what's very important uh, what is extremely important is zinc zinc is such an important immune supporter together with vitamin b6 and zinc remember in the past talk it makes serotonin and melatonin and that helps you to sleep better so a right amount of zinc is very important for you the antioxidants and of course the vitamin c now vitamin c wow, you have heard it again and again this is a, a slide from my past talk and it is so important that you are supplementing with vitamin c because unfortunately not always can we get the right amounts of vitamin c simply by eating the fruit yes i want you to eat lots of the good fruit but unfortunately it's not enough i would always and there are so many so many researchers done on it and so much good uh, trusted research that says we need more so provide yourself with a really good vitamin c supplement uh, preferably a ester c 
it makes all the difference about the bioavailability, how it's resorbed, uh, that it is not um, uh, artificially made, that is from natural sources, it's very important, the body can absorb it much better and assimilate it much better. But see how important it is, it's important for your brain. It is impo important for your muscles and joints. It's important for your lung and it's important for your immune system. Okay, again. Also, there are very, very good immune stimulant herbs available. And you surely have heard of echinacea and elderberries. Um, that's a very, very good herb to have. And you find them in the health food shops. You find a good echinacea uh, solution that you can take in drops in water. That's a very excellent immune booster. And it's as preventative, it's, it's excellent, not just when you're sick, but preventing and strengthening your immune system before you get sick. Mm. And of course, the probiotics for your gut, absolutely, you need them and they help you to keep the bad guys at bay. And at last thing, I would also like to mention that the essential oils from the rind, from the berries, from the seeds, from the leaves and plant matter of a plant is basically nature's uh, pharmacy. It is the lifeblood of these plants. And by taking one or two drops of a citrus oil, there are the D lemonane, that is the active substances. We have a lot of research on the substances that are in the essential oils that are highly, highly potent. And unfortunately, the TGA in Australia does not really allow us to say and make all healing claims that is not allowed. Essential oils in Australia are really only uh, allowed as a perfume. However, I can encourage you to do your own research on cineol and carvacol and all those active substances that you find in the essential oils that are highly potent. It's up to you to research it. Or you can ask me and I will do another talk, but I must be so careful not to make any healing claims, otherwise the TGA will slap me. So that's it for today. I thank you so much and I wish you all the best. Stay well and I'm so looking forward to seeing you in person. Hopefully we can soon get together in real life. Goodbye.